Hello and welcome to It's All About You, the best show about you on the internet. I am B. Dave Walters, writer, life coach, talk radio host, BeliefNet featured blogger. Going to talk more about that soon. This is episode number 70, Peace. And you know, I used to start with quotes all the time and then I kind of stopped doing it. So now I, I have a quote that's back again and it is this. How unhappy is he or she that cannot forgive themselves? How unhappy is he or she who cannot forgive themselves? And let me see, if I can say it, I'm going to try. By Publilius Cyrus. Publilius Cyrus. Yeah, and if you want to see it, that one's up on my fan page. Uh, currently, facebook.com forward slash B Dave Walters. So, my blog is about to go live very soon. It's all set up. Uh, they're, they're working on my, my banner art and a couple other things. All the contracts are signed. It's a good time. So that's why I want to do this video because we've been talking a lot lately about the topic of peace. And I put up yesterday to my, my friends and my fans about what did they want to hear about for this 70th video. Well, 70. And the number one thing was from my friend, uh, Rennie, Rennie Wulandari, who's awesome. Rennie, shout out. Uh, and she said she wanted me to talk about getting out of your comfort zone and basically, you know, getting out there, taking risks, getting out of your comfort zone. And I was prepared to talk about that, and I realized it's still all kind of interconnected with this concept of peace, though. And so I am talking about that, Rennie, but I'm kind of coming, like, around it from a different angle. Because I've recently been talking to a friend of mine, and this is a conversation that I've had quite frequently with people who are coaches or healers or advisors, or whatever, who help other people with their problems, but don't really seem to have a huge handle on, or a good handle on their own problems. Does that make sense? And part of that is just human nature, because everybody else's BS is always transparent, right? I mean, like, I think everybody you know, you could probably tell them in about two minutes all the things they're doing wrong, right? And help them get, get a handle on things. But when it comes to having a, a coming to grips with that person in the mirror and understanding you know where you are and what you're dealing with and how it's stopping you from moving forward that's what can be really difficult and you know we've been talking a lot lately about this idea of of our infinite capacity for self-deception and it's an infinite capacity for self-deception okay now, if you're watching this video on BeliefNet, where I intend to post it, all my previous videos are, again, on my Facebook fan page, which is facebook.com forward slash B. Dave Walters. Or if you're seeing this on TheExaminer.com or anywhere else, I'm worldwide now, baby. It's, my stuff's everywhere. You can always see all the old videos. And especially for those of you that are my friends and fans and followers, I suppose, from The Examiner, I embed these videos in the articles, but for some reason, a lot of the older articles, the videos that went with them, have been, like, taken out, like they switch formats and the videos aren't there anymore. So again, all of those up on the Facebook fan page, which is facebook.com forward slash B Dave Walters. Now, you know, we've talked a lot about this concept of forgiveness and we've talked a lot about this idea of completing the past. And something that uh, has come up lately, I have um, uh, a person I've been working with showing them some, you know, some, some different sides of, of uh, spirituality and the more mystical approach to spirituality and interfacing with, with our creator kind of directly, more than just sort of like a stiff book knowledge of what God is supposed to be like and kind of understanding and experiencing directly what God really is like. And I was telling uh, this person that one of the ways that you can sort of gauge uh, a given person's uh, spiritual level for instance, it's not really so much in what they say, it's because unfortunately there's a lot of people out there that blow smoke on purpose to try and make money, and then there's some people that unintentionally blow smoke because they think they're at a level that they're not at. Here's how you know, uh, in terms of who's really legit, in terms of uh, teachers or, or healers or ministers or holy people, uh, holy men, holy women, gurus, whatever, here's how you judge them. It is not whether or not they have problems, because we all have problems. 
and really, if you read the Bible or any holy scriptures, many times, the, the harder that you're working for God and the closer you're getting to God and the closer you're connecting with the universe, many times the more problems you're going to have. So it's not necessarily that they won't have problems, but they should be able to endure those problems with a sense of peace uh, and with a sense of grace and with a sense of, of being rooted in something bigger than themselves. Does that make sense? They shouldn't really be blown along the waves and have like big, obvious, gaping problems with their life, right? So if you find yourself in this place, especially if you so, if you fancy yourself to be a coach or an advisor or somebody's going to help you, other people, then the first thing you got to do is help yourself. Okay? It's like that old saying: "A physician heal thyself first. This is sort of the same thing. Okay? Now, the number one way you do that is by being complete with the past. Complete with the past. I recorded a, a very powerful exercise in episode 37. It was the instant change episode. Something called a switch pattern. So if you have any painful memories, something that you think about and every time you think about it still sort of upsets you, go look at episode 37 and I will talk you through a process where you can change that like that. Okay? And you can fix it where this memory and this pain is gone forever. And this memory and this idea no longer has any power over you whatsoever. Because here's the challenge, here's the real challenge of, of being a, a coach. Um, and I believe I've shared this with you in the past. I'm sorry, I'm pulling my, my timer back up so I can see how much time I got. The big problem is, just like I said how you can see everybody else's problems really fast, I can see everybody else's problems really fast. And I can tell you in about 30 seconds you know, where, where your blocks are, where your obstacles are, and I can even tell you what you should do to, uh, to, to get to getting past that and, and repairing that, as it were. You know, I don't really like to think in terms of fixing, but completing things. But the thing is, when I say it, it just has no impact on you. It doesn't. Just like you can tell them, and if you just say it, they're not going to hear you either. They're not going to hear you because they can't hear you. Can't. Right? So the very first thing you've got to do, if you want to step out of your comfort zone, or if you want to experience this sense of peace, is the very first thing you have to do is truly believe that you can step out of your comfort zone, that you can experience peace, that you can experience healing, that you can be free from these burdens and this pain. That's the first thing. Like I was speaking to someone recently who mentioned that they, they had this very vivid memory of their past lives and all of the, the pain and suffering that they've endured in life after life after life and basically how, you know, just life has been this one long string of terrible experiences across many lives. And what I wanted to say, I didn't say at the time, but what I wanted to say was if you truly feel like you're being sent this same lesson over and over again, then the question I would ask myself is, what is it that I'm not learning that is causing me to repeat this cycle? Same thing in your life. If you're constantly having bad relationships with men or women, if you're constantly dating abusers, if you're constantly dating cheaters, if you're constantly getting into situations, personally or professionally, where people take advantage of you and don't respect you, well, what's the one thing that all these situations have in common? Well, it's you, right? I mean, I, it sounds mean. And let me just say this again. I, sometimes it's rare now, but when I'm, like, direct with somebody, because a lot of times I let people tell me the story, and I hear the whole story, and I let them try and sell me on, you know, the past and why their situation is so unique and so terrible, and then I gently tell them that that doesn't really matter. It's in the past. It's done. And here's what you need to do to move forward. But sometimes I like I'm direct. I'm like, here is the issue. This is what you do to fix it. Even though I, I know it doesn't work. And every, you know what it is. This this is how how God kind of messes with me. Every time I resolve, I am never going to just lay it down for somebody ever again. Every time I'm like, this is the last time, never again. Somebody gets it. Somebody gets it, and they're all like, oh, I hear what you're getting at. Hey, wow, that is the issue. Hey, wow, I really can do that and fix it. Hey, wow, my life has changed. Everything's wonderful. Thanks, Dave. And then I'm like, hey, hey thanks, God. That's, uh, that's awesome. I'm glad they're happy, but apparently I still have to <laughs> go back to this, this hit or miss cycle. right? So, But sometimes people are all like, oh, don't get mad at me. Man, I'm not mad. I don't get mad. 
I really don't. If I get to the point that I even begin to feel irritated, well, I'll just stop talking about it. So if I take the time to repeat to you or explain to you, especially if I explain to you multiple times what the issue is and how you can be free from it, then it's only because I care. Because when I don't care, I will just seem totally indifferent. When you're like, wow, this happened, and I'm all like, wow, that's crazy. Okay, and change the subject, that's, that's when I don't care. So it's not that I'm mad at you, okay? I love you. You know I love you. So look at not only this cycle of things that are coming up again and again, and most people will look at this and say, well, I've only dated cheaters, therefore all men are cheaters. You know, uh, I've, I've only dated uh, mean, abusive women, therefore all women are abusive, except you can look around and you can see that that's not the case. You can see that there's guys who don't cheat and there's women who are mean. So if the only type of person that you get are cheaters or mean people, and you have to ask, what is it in you that is causing this to happen? And I can tell you, it is in the past. It is something that is rooted in the past. Now, if you're having difficulties taking risk, if you're having difficulty stepping out of your comfort zone, because most everybody does, then it's the same thing. You have to look, what is it in the past? What is it that has happened? Was it because your mom always told you, you're not pretty enough to do that? You just need to try and find a man to marry you and just punch out some babies and hope for the best. Then you'd be surprised. There's moms out there that say things like that. And if you are a mom, don't don't say things like that. Or maybe it was your dad told you just in passing that you were weren't smart enough to go to school. You shouldn't worry about that. Just get a job. Go go be an auto mechanic. College isn't for you. You don't have the brains. Maybe that happened. Maybe that happened. And I can tell you this is how you start to figure it out. You go back and you look and you think about what's the earliest time that you can remember feeling this way? What's the earliest time that you were confronted with doing something different and something went wrong? Maybe you really did finally decide, okay, I will try out for cheerleading practice, and you fell and everybody laughed at you. Maybe that was the last time you took a risk, right? Or whatever, but I guarantee you, if you look, if you look in your personal past, something happened, and it could have been something small, but something happened that you made that decision right then, well, I'm going to stay behind my wall. And when you find that earliest memory, that's when you go apply the swish pattern technique from episode 37 and start to chip away at the negative emotions that have built up because you have an energetic block, a literal block that will stop you from moving forward. Does this make sense? And it will stop you from experiencing true, genuine lasting peace because you cannot forgive yourself you cannot forgive yourself and you cannot forgive whoever slighted you until you destroy that emotional ball of yuckiness that has built up does that make sense do you understand what i'm saying because lots of people are all like oh well, i've forgiven him i just hate him well then if you still hate him you haven't forgiven him and remember it doesn't mean that this person is going to be a part of your life. Maybe they won't. It doesn't mean that you're going to be friends with the woman who stole your husband again. Eh, maybe you won't. Maybe that person really isn't trustworthy, and by all accounts, they probably aren't trustworthy. But you can recognize somebody isn't healthy for you without you having negative emotion towards them or towards a situation. Does that make sense? It's like I've shared with you in the past. When you get to the point that you no longer feel the need to see them punished or to get even or to get revenge somehow, then that's when you know you've truly forgiven somebody. Even when you get to the point that you can feel compassion for them, that's when you know that you've truly forgiven them. Does that make sense? Because if you're not in that place, if you don't feel that way, then you have not truly released this. And you will not feel any peace or true real peace inside until you release these things. Does that make sense? Now let me tell you something. Some of us have damaged interpersonal relationships. Okay? And I'm here to tell you, as long as you're alive, it is possible to repair those relationships. Okay? Now, if you're in a situation with another human being, and you're asking for their forgiveness, they may not be in a place where they can forgive you. Maybe not. Depends on what happened. Depends on what you did or did not do, quite frankly. It, it depends on the gravity of it, right? 
I mean, if it's something like you were in high school and the two of you were fighting over a boy and you got the boy and she didn't, you can probably work past that. If it's something like you attack them with a knife and stab them 37 times and they still have to get surgery and physical therapy for it, they might not be in a place where they're willing to let this go. But the good news is you don't need them to accept your apology. You don't need them to give you anything. Why? You know why. Tell me why. Tell me why. Because forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. Forgiveness is for you. Okay? You released the negative emotion that you still have towards it. And when you come out of that place of genuineness and sincerity that then enables you to apologize from your heart, from your soul, from the depth of your being, then whether or not they accept it is actually secondary. Does that make sense? Or it may be in the fullness of time that they reach a point that they can do it later. Or maybe they never will. It's possible. It's possible. But once you've put that burden down, then it enables you to move forward. Okay? Now let me say one other thing about risk, by the way. When there's something that you want to try, that you want to step out and do something, and you're not sure if you should try it or not, here, here's a simple test. Ask yourself, what is the absolute worst thing that will happen if you try? And what's the worst thing that will happen if you don't try? What's the worst thing? Okay? And then ask yourself, can you live with the absolute worst thing that will happen? Is that tolerable? Like, for instance, if you want to apply for a new job, well, the worst thing might be you don't get the job. Or if you want a new promotion, well, maybe your coworkers will kind of be weird to you now. Maybe some of them won't be your friend anymore. You might have to work some longer hours. Okay, more responsibility. But can you accept working with some haters and more responsibility? If you can, apply for the job. If you can't, don't. That's the thing. Look at the absolute worst case. The worst case scenario. Can you tolerate the worst case? If you can, do it. If you can't, don't. Does that make sense? And this will keep you out of trouble out of a lot of things in your life. Like if you're thinking about cheating on your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and you're like, well, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Uh, they'll find out, we'll break up, I'll get kicked out and be homeless, then it's probably not worth laying with this other person. All morality aside, you know, I'm against cheating all the time. But even, you know, brass tacks. Just uh, just simplicity. Because morality, I mean, you get a couple drinks in a dark room, you know, morality can go out the window. But just look at risk versus reward. Risk versus reward. But remember, you've got, because we're running out of time here, you've got to believe that you can do it. You've got to believe it long before anybody else is going to believe it. You've got to believe that that change, that that healing, that that peace is possible. Possible. And I'm not talking about fake it till you make it. I'm not saying try and convince yourself that you're happy when you're really miserable. I'm not saying that at all. You have to believe that the space for happiness exists. You have to create the room for it, right? Same thing. I know someone who's having an issue with a family member. And they keep trying to call the family member and they won't return their phone calls. But the person who's doing the calling doesn't believe the relationship can be resolved. They don't believe that they can ever be, you know, on good terms again. So I'm like, it doesn't matter if you spend the next 10 years calling. You can call 500 times. If you don't believe that healing can take place, then healing is not going to take place. If you expect conflict, you will manifest conflict. If you expect failure, you will manifest failure. If you expect success, if you expect victory, then you will manifest success and victory. Okay? And remember, it may come in a way and in a time that you don't expect. My case in point, honestly, there was a job I really wanted, and it ended up not happening because they dissolved the position. But out of nowhere, they approached me about a better job that I'd never even heard of. People that I didn't even know knew me because they saw all the good work I was doing, and they offered me a bigger position that I didn't even know existed. Okay? So you never know how your goodness and how your blessing is going to manifest. You just have to know that your goodness will manifest. Okay? I'm about out of time. Right? So remember, find that earliest memory. Watch episode 37, Instant Change. Start dissolving those emotional blocks. 
and then forgive yourself for what you did or what you didn't do and forgive them for what they did or what they didn't do and then you can move forward with power okay remember you can find everything about me on a website called about.me forward slash b dave walters you are great and i love you okay bye bye